This tutorial will cover advanced approaches to editing headshot eyes, and I'll be using some extreme examples so that you can see how improvements can be made, even if a problem at first seems impossible to solve. The methods demonstrated in this tutorial will include morphing and reprojection, as well as mesh and image editing, and there's a lot to cover, so let's get started. The first example is relatively straightforward. Here, the subject in the original photo has very large upper eyelids, and the eyelid crease is so high that Headshot has been unable to match the eyelid geometry correctly to the original photo. And for many users, this may not appear to be a major issue. However, if you're aiming for the best possible results and want the model to animate as well as it can, then it's important to address issues like this wherever possible. So in this case, the automatically generated model eyelids are simply not correctly proportioned. So the first task is to improve the proportions using headshot morphs. And within the headshot eye folder, there are subfolders for eyelid, crease, as well as fold, which can be used along with the more general eye morphs to begin to reproportion the eyelids. Now, this is an iterative process. You'll notice that I'm making a few morph changes, then reprojecting and checking the result before making further morph changes to steadily improve the proportions. And in this case, with just a couple of morph and reprojection passes, the main issues are fixed, but there's still more to do. You see, the eyes are inevitably the most difficult part to get right on a 3D character model. The geometry is complex and the tolerances are very fine. So if you're aiming for realism, it makes sense to spend time and take as much care as possible when working on the eyes. And this includes adjusting the model not only from the frontal view, but also adjusting the depth of the eyelids, eyeballs, and eye corners. And headshot morphs cover all of the primary transformations needed to do this, which should be sufficient in the vast majority of cases. And where they are not, you can move to mesh editing, which I'll cover later in this tutorial. Now, there's a very simple rule you can follow to get the best results from headshot and from 3D modeling more generally. As an artist, the more you put in, in terms of time, observation, and careful editing, the better the resulting model will be. And you'll notice that many of the changes I've been making to this model are tiny, yet they all add up to a more accurate as well as a more realistic model overall. So now, after all of the morph adjustments to this model, I'm performing a final reproject before checking the texture around the eyes in more detail. And there is a line on the texture above the left eye, caused by the shadow from the subject's brow in the original image and that's something which can easily be fixed by external image editing. Here in Photoshop, it's simply a matter of careful cloning around the problem area to blend it away. And updating the skin texture back in Headshot, as you can see, the shadow line has now gone and the skin appears more seamless. Next, let's take another scenario. This time, the model has been generated from a photo where the subject's eyes are closed, and clearly this isn't ideal for Headshot. Now, if you followed my earlier tutorial on headshot texturing, you'll know that with some image editing experience, you can make composites. So, in this case, you could add eyes to the photo. But let's see what can be done without such a drastic step. So again, I'm first using morphs to adjust the eyes. And since there's no reference here from the original photo, I'm necessarily estimating where I think the eyes would naturally be when this subject's eyes are open. And with the eyes in a more natural position, I reproject the original texture and then move on to some image editing to remove the eyelash imagery which is currently on the model's cheeks, as well as to balance out the imagery around the eyelids themselves. Now, you'll notice that I'm using some UV reference here. This is simply to ensure that I'm working in the right areas relative to the eye opening. Though, of course, UV reference can be used generally when editing textures on any part of a character creator model. And just as when I was removing the shadow line on the previous example, here I'm using Photoshop's cloning stamp to blend in the areas of skin which I've copied over the eyelash imagery, as well as using the stamp to blend out the closed eyelid edges. So now, updating the skin texture back in Headshot, the fundamental issues of the eyes being wrongly positioned and the texture being clearly unnatural are, at least for the most part, resolved. But when you're working on eyes, more so than any other part of a human model, and especially if you plan to use the model for close-up animation, it's important to improve the geometry as much as you can. 
and this means adjusting the depth where needed, as well as polishing any other areas which appear out of place. Now, because the original eye and eyelid height adjustment had to be quite extreme to account for Headshot's attempt to produce eyes when they were closed, the area above the eyelids looks unnatural, and whilst I could spend time using morphs to improve this, here I'm using vertex editing. And please note that I have the model's eyes closed in order to be able to select and transform the vertices more easily. And in terms of workflow, you can of course use morphs, not only headshot morphs, but general character creator morphs, and alternate between morphs and mesh editing at any time when working on headshot models. But to complete this example for now, I'll make one last texture adjustment. I could have added some eyelid rim shadow when I was editing the texture in Photoshop before, but here I'll simply use an eyeshadow procedural texture along with eyelid masking to emphasize the eyelid edges. Finally, we'll take a much more difficult example. If you're familiar with Headshot, you'll know that the automatic model generation process depends on the software being able to read the features in the original photo. And in this case, it's clear that the eyes, in terms of both position and shape, are not well matched to the original image at all. So as before, the initial approach is to use Headshot morphs to align the eyes, and again, you'll see that I'm using an iterative process whereby I apply a few morphs and keep checking the match using the opacity slider on the overlay in Headshot. And exactly how you do this is up to you, but generally speaking, it makes sense to make the larger, more general changes first to better approximate eye scale and position before moving further into detail. And this is very much how the Headshot morphs are set up with the general folders and basic frontal transforms at the start of each feature folder. Now, it's important to be aware that you cannot work at this level using sculpt morphs alone. Whilst sculpt morphs are great for making general changes, they use a much reduced morph set and simply don't have the level of detail which is provided by the headshot morph sliders in the modify panel. And whilst the sheer number of morphs can be daunting at the start, if you want to use Headshot to produce the best models possible, it will really help to become familiar with the morph sliders themselves. Just as with the first example, I've now performed a couple of reprojects and the frontal alignment is coming along. So now I'm taking a look at the depth, both at the eyeballs as well as the relationship between the eyeballs and the eyelids at each eye. And this is very much a balancing act and one of the most difficult parts of eye modeling since you're not only aiming to keep the shape matched to the original frontal image, you're also aiming for an eye shape and eyeball scale and position, which appears as natural as possible in profile. And again, if you watch what I'm doing closely, you'll see that for the most part, the changes I'm making are tiny, yet they're slowly adding up to produce more natural looking eyes, which still match the photo, but in 3D. Now, I'm speeding up this section a bit more so that we can move on to further issues but you'll notice that I'm regularly turning the model to see just how the morphs are affecting the mesh in the round, and it's important to do this, to keep observing and checking whether things are improving. And as I keep on adjusting the eyes, please do bear in mind the point I made about sculpt morphs, because you'll see that I'm applying morphs here from sliders, which sculpt morphing is, as yet, unable to handle. So I've just performed a final reproject because I'm generally happy with the alignment, and I'm checking the model more thoroughly before making further changes. And as you can see, I'm using a light to see how the geometry is responding. And I'm also minimizing eyelash shadow in the modify material panel because the default setting inevitably interferes with conventional lighting. Now, apart from a few final tweaks, it may seem that this model is almost done, but that's not the case. Since Headshot and Character Creator are designed for making models for animation, it's vital that the character's eyes can blink effectively. And looking at this model's blink, it's clear that there's a problem since the upper eyelids are going much too far and not meeting the lower eyelids correctly. Now, there's a quick fix for this, which is to use Character Creator's new correct eye blink function. And this forces the eyelid edges to match when closed. But now, the most obvious issue which needs to be addressed is the texture of the eyelids since the dark shadows from the original photo are visible at the eyelid edges and inner eye corners. And this could be improved to a degree with further photo alignment and reprojection, 
but here I'm using external image editing to fix the texture. And just as with the first example, I'm using the cloning stamp to take out unwanted areas of shadow. But it's important to be aware that with photos of certain subjects where the eyes have heavy lids and there's a lot of shadow, fixing the eyelid texture like this will inevitably reveal any remaining shape issues. So in this case, the eyes can certainly benefit from further polishing. And whilst you can continue to use morphs to do this, particularly when working at difficult areas like the eyes, don't forget that if you're finding that the morphs aren't providing the exact transformation you need in a particular area, you can also use Character Creator's Mesh Editing to fine-tune the mesh further. And Mesh Editing provides complete control down to vertex level, so if any part of the eye still appears misshapen, you can go in at any point and make the particular adjustment you need. Now, just how much editing is required to improve a particular headshot model's eyes will vary enormously since so much depends on the original photo and how well Headshot generates the initial model. But even when the model isn't ideal, like the ones shown here, you can make significant improvements. Thanks for watching.